Okay, so today we're going to be going over how to do a complete rig in Duick Angela 2023. Go ahead and set up your workspace. So I have my workspace set up like this. And then open up your puppet. We're going to be opening up the artwork uh, comp. Make sure that you have your guide set. We're going to go into bones. Once we open up bones, we're going to go into humanoid. And then actually, let's set up the character's name first. So this is a cool feature that Duick did not have. Uh, Duick Basil or Basil or Basil. Am I, am I cooking something? Anyway, um, Angela has a feature where you can set the name. Now, um, I like to turn the guides into shape layers so that way it doesn't pixelate because these uh, guides we're going to need to use to set the anchor point. Now, if you type in scale, you can go in here and set the scale to 20%. And then once you set the scale to 20% of the uh, groups, make sure you don't set the scale of the entire layer to 20%. Um, you want to make sure you're only setting up the groups uh, to 20%. Once you have that set, it's going to be a lot easier to set up the uh, anchor points. Um, now, if you're not rigging the face, you really don't have to set up the anchor points. You can kind of just skip that. And usually with the head, what I would do is... I would group the entire head and do all of my uh, feature rigging inside of a comp for the head. For this, it's a simple rig, so I'm not going to do that. Um, what we're going to do instead is set the anchor points starting with the head itself. So when we get to this head here, I'm going to move the anchor point where I want the head to rotate. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of the body. So we're going to go through each limb and set up all the anchor points where the guide should be. If you have any questions, because I'm going to kind of speed through this pretty fast. If you've if you never used basil or basil um, before, then um, you're going to want to uh, probably watch one of my older videos about this. Or um, yeah, I'll share I'll share the link in the description. So let's just blaze through this like the flash, and then we'll get to like the fun stuff. Okay, so select the arm, the forearm, and the hand. When you're selecting limbs, you want to start with the root or the topmost limb and then work your way down to the tip. So in the arm's case, you're going to be starting with the, the arm, the forearm, and the hand. Then you're going to go into bones and then humanoid, and then you're going to click on the gear. And then you're going to select front or back. So front and back, this means where the arm is based on the viewer, which is you. So this arm is in the back of the of the puppet, and it's also the left arm of the puppet. And then once you hit you know, submit or whatever, it will build the bones. You always have to move the tip of the bones to the tip of the finger. And then also you can change the colors of the bones as well. So, and you can also test the bones out here. Because I, I like to test, I like to test the rotation, make sure the the limbs are moving properly. And it looks like this is moving pretty good. So, yay, we did it. Um, so, yeah, if you want to change the color of the bones, um, you can go into the Angela properties for bones and change the colors. But if you're okay with the color of the bones, then you should be good to go. It should be golden. I'm going to go ahead and change the color of the bones. Um, go into bone setting, color, and then we're just going to change these. Let me see what color I should change it to. Uh, yeah, let's change it black. All right, so we have the bones changed to black with some opacity to it. And then we're going to do the same thing with the other arm. Okay, so now that we have both arms rigged, we're going to go ahead and do the legs. So we're going to start with our thigh, the calf, the foot, and the toes. And it feels like I'm working for uh, a chicken store or a shop. <laughs> I'm about to cook some chicken, man. All right. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Just joking. Um, so anyway, uh, once you have all these uh, limbs selected, um, I, yeah, let's not do the other limb yet. Um, we will go ahead and rig this selecting all these in order that's very important and then humanoid leg gear hit click the gear 
and then this is the back leg, this is the left leg, and then you don't, yeah, you want to make sure you click toes. By default, most people won't have toes because it's not part of their artwork um, that designed the puppet, but I highly, highly, highly recommend you have a toe layer if you want your puppet to really bend and work properly. So now we got to do this. This is a little tricky. Just make sure you have this set to the anchor or the anchor. <laughs> the anchor what, are, what are we on a ship or something? The anchor point set to the ankle. And then uh, we got to move the, also we got to move the tip too. So that looks okay. That's where the, the foot will rotate. Then this part here is actually the tip of the foot. And then the green one, you got to hold the shift key and make sure that you hold the shift key and you move it to the right. If you don't do this correctly and you're, and you're planning to use the wall cycle feature, it's going to jack up the wall cycle feature. So this is one of these things that's like extremely, extremely important to get right. All right. So now we have both legs rigged. We're going to do the torso now. So when we do the torso, uh, we it's the same. It's really the same thing. We got to make sure we select these layers in order. So we're going to start with the torso. And then we're going to work our way here. I'm just going to adjust this really quick. I might have forgotten to uh, set the anchor point for the torso. So just make sure you have that correct. And then the neck. I want to make sure I make sure the neck is looking good. I think so. I want to, and if you have any shadows, you'll notice I'm attaching stuff to other layers. Anything that you want to move with the layer, like color shadows, things like that. You want to tag those together. You want to tag them to the proper layer that they should be attached. You also can do this with props if the character is holding the sword or something. Now we're going to spine this time and we want to make sure we set the number of layers and the number of spines. Uh, in this case, we have only one spine. Um, normally you'd want to have two. It's the same idea as with the uh, toe. You want to have the maximum number of ways to bend because you want this character to be bending like Spider-Man, honestly. So set the tip to the top of the head, just like we did for the hand and the toe. And then we're going to highlight all these. And then we're going to go back into Angela, set the bone setting, and then we're going to change the color because we want to be able to see the bones. Um, otherwise, if we can't see the bones, it kind of defeats the purpose of manipulating these, this puppet properly. All right, so now we're going to auto rig. So select all bones under the bones tab, and then we're going to do auto rig and the magic will begin. Uh, just click on that and then um, just give it a moment. It's auto rigging all the bones and then we're going to test them because they're going to be building controllers. So anything with a C in front of the layer, uh, naming is a controller, and then B, of course, is a bone. And it'll start making these icons, which we're going to have to move and adjust. Okay, so now that the uh, auto rig is complete, we're going to show and hide bones, and then uh, we're going to go ahead and do the zero out uh, part of the process. So let's go ahead and get that done. Um, so I'm going ahead and clicked on select bones there and then we're going to deselect the ones that are zeroed out already and then we're going to go to links and constraints and then we're going to go to add zero so we're, the reason why we want to do this is because if we are rigging and we want to get back to the original defaults you know pose we can easily click zero on a position and it'll return to its default pose. That's the only reason why we really want to do that. All right, so the next thing we want to do is go through the rest of these layers, which are the bones, and we want to lock them. And also we want to lock the drawing layers, just, in, just so we don't accidentally click on them at all. And then we want to shy these layers as well. So we're going to go down the list and shy all of the bones and all of the art layers so that way we don't have like this huge list of layers 
that we really don't need to see. The, really, the only thing you should be seeing is the controllers, and that's it. Um, that's going to make uh, the animator so much happier that they only see the control layers and not a bunch of crazy sub layers and such. I don't even know if you would really you wouldn't really call them sub layers, but you get get what I'm saying. All right, so now let's modify these icons a bit. Um, we're going to start with the hand or the head. I'm sorry, the head layer. We're going to move the head layer to the left, and then we're going to set that there, so that way we can move the controller without it being on top of the face. Then we're going to go to the next layer. And we're going to move, yeah, let's do the torso, actually. We're going to modify the torso here. I could, yeah, let's change the color. Yeah, that's good. All right. Then next thing we're going to do is go to the body. Move the body controller like we did for the head, and we're gonna make it big. And this this controller moves the entire body. Just keep that in mind. If you ever want to move the entire puppet, you're gonna to want to move the body puppet for sure. And then next thing you want to do is go to the arm. And then we're going to take the hand controller and move it. Well, you saw that I just rotated it, but you can also want to move. You also want to move it away from the hand, like we did the head. That way, when the hand changes its direction, it will also change the controller's direction too, which is pretty cool. We're going to do the same thing with the feet as well. So that way, when the animator gets ready to animate, they can just move by they can move the hand and the arms just by clicking on the blue hand or the blue foot if they want to move feet. So change rotation and then just set the controller a little bit underneath the feet. It's just right. We're gonna do the same thing with this as well, and then you can you can pretty much just match what I'm typing in here. And we'll just adjust the feet, the happy feet. All right. One last thing we need to do is uh, take away the anchor points. So select all the controllers, type in size, and then go to each anchor point. And you see that it says 100. Um, you, we're going to change that to 0. And that way, for the controllers, there'll be no visible anchor points. Um, so that's just a little tiny tip. And then you're done. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this project, and then we're going to begin setting up the walt cycle. Um, before we do that, though, uh, what I would recommend doing is testing out the rig, making sure that the arms and legs and everything is moving. Blah, 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 blah.